In front of thousands of people and you know he won't disappoint. You're in for a concert of a lifetime tomorrow night as he performs his new show live. Take the Crown is here on Skywin HD at nine. And now he's back chatting to his buddy, James Corden. I was really thrilled when they asked me to interview him because it'll be a really nice way to spend a day to, to, to talk to someone who I've admired for such a long time. Was it exhausting being in Take That at the beginning? Because it looked yeah. like it, it was hard, right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, there was, there was no one or nothing in place to say no. Uh, yeah. Because, you know, everybody was inexperienced. It's nobody's fault, you know. But we'd kind of, like, do... Uh, and this is why we were so successful and this is why, why it worked. It's because we worked really hard. But incredibly rewarding and gives you incredible work muscles too. I've seen this on other documentaries and I've seen Jason Orange go, if you think back to the first round, time around, it was just awful. It was awful. I've, I was a fan then and it looked like you were just having a blast and I'm sure there were moments that weren't that good, but there were moments that were amazing, that were brilliant, weren't there? Uh, absolutely. Of course, there was moments, more than moments where it was absolutely brilliant and more than moments where all five of us got on like we were brothers and it was the best laugh you'd ever had in the mm. world. One day I'd be in the pub in Tunstall having a pint and then the next day I'd be in Japan having sushi in a hotel and having lots of Japanese girls scream at me. Hello, welcome back, or good morning if you've just joined us. It's uh, TVAM, it's 7.49. It's a bit early for some people, as uh, you might gather. Our next guest, in fact. Hello, number one, tell us who you are and where'd you come from. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gary. You're Gary? Yeah. I'm, I'm Robbie and... I'm Jason. Yeah. All right. So the new kids thing? Yeah, everybody's comparing us to the new kids, so we... we and we're getting a bit of flack for it, because, like, people are not having us on the shows and things because we're, they think we're trying to be something, and we're not trying to be anything. They think you're ripping them off. So yeah, yeah. we're the first take that. We're not, we're not new kids, we're not anything like that. <laughs> Woo! Here we go. <laughs> and then Good guys. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and the ball. I love how short your shorts are. They're the and shortest then. shorts. This is, this is some big moves now. You ready? Oh! Wow. Whoa-wee! Whoa-wee! Whoa-wee, indeed. <laughs> Whoa-wee, indeed. I mean... I'd done drugs and I was listening to indie music by then. Are you serious? Yes. That early on? Oh, yes. Really? Yes, yes. That's where it'd be like, oh, my... I'm in a boy band. But, no, but, you're, but you sound like you're being quite... You're quite into it and you're saying people are comparing us to the new kids and if you've seen our... Well, people do... You've seen our videos... Uh, well, you'll people know that... do that now, you know, it's like... The Wanted, we're not anything like One Direction. Yeah, yeah, One yeah. Direction, we're not anything like The Wanted. Yeah. I think it's the stock answer that you're supposed to give. When right. In actuality, yes, we're an awful lot like New Kids on the Block. We're working glass lads that all sing and dance. Did you know that you were going to be massive? And, um, and after that, when, when did you know, oh, my God, we're really big now? As Once we've been on Wogan. Right. But that was for promises, so we weren't actually massive. Right. But it was the fact that we'd been on Wogan. Yeah. I remember going up motorway service stations uh, the next day, going home or going to another gig, and we'd been on Wogan, and we were in Fast Forward magazine. Right. And I can remember getting the Fast Forward magazines on all the shelves at the news agents in the, in the service stations station and turning them to the page that we were on and leaving it on the uh, shelf leaving it on the shelf yeah. have you I ever done that still do it now yeah yeah nice so did i know we were going to be big no no it was still the only ticket so you know persevered regardless um i just left school without any gcse's i wasn't about to retake them and go to College, yeah, yeah, yeah. university. I don't think it's, it's in me. This was it. It's this. this was absolutely it. Me with the floor show, kicking with your torso, boys getting high in the course. More so, if you answer me, know the man I can't forget. Well, I got, you got, so we got everybody. I got the gift. 
When did you start thinking, I might have a solo career outside of this band? Before I joined the band. <laughs> did you? Well, no, really? no, 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 I didn't. I didn't. Because um... I think you I think you'd might not even know how early you were thinking about it. I am d d the best. I've, I've noticed, you know, Bono must have been incredibly delusional to get to be Bono. Robbie Williams was incredibly delusional to get to stadiums. Boy in the boy band, that boy in the short shorts with Mad Lizzie, gets to do stadiums in Argentina. Yeah. How do you get to get to there? Well, you have delusions bigger than yourself. Watch this clip. OK. Yeah, just calm down and bless you. Bad Come out the camera, please. please. Thank you. Dear Robbie, you are the best in show business. You are the best personality and celebrity that ever been. Leave, take that. No, it's it a leave, it does. <laughs> it says, leave, take that and become a solo says, artist. Because I'm be. sure you can be. be. I'm sure you can be. I'm sure you can be the next himself. George Michael. And that's what she He's said. It to she himself. loves me. <laughs> and all the people here have wrote to me and nobody else because they love me. Let's get Rob. <laughs> Now, all you've done at that point is sing half a lead vocal on I Found Heaven. <laughs> yeah, the vocal and I Found Heaven um, isn't me. No. Yeah. Uh, with somebody With else some... Somebody yeah, because I actually couldn't hit those notes. But, I mean, looking at that clip... Absolutely delusional, but, but I'm sure that's not, how you get... But clearly not that delusional, because it's all... Like, but, is but, it but, delusional but, or is it really... really or is it a, an absolute self-confidence and self-belief? OK, that kid goes on to sell three million tickets on a world tour and 60-something million albums. That's delusional. How long after that did you, did you leave Take That? 95. And the day you left, there was a girl at school who I was trying to woo, who I used to go and watch Take That gigs with. It was on the 10 o'clock news that you'd left Take That, and I called her and said, uh, Robbie's left Take That. And all I could hear was her, like, wailing down the phone. And I thought, oh, if only I was there. To console to her. To console her, I could do a lean-in. A console grope. Yeah, definitely. Which, yeah. which is the best type of grope. A canope. To this day. <laughs>
yourself a merry little Christmas. Net Heat Protect Styling Sprays from the iconic hairspray. Smooth it. Wave it. Boost it. Defeat extreme heat with up to 230 degree protection. Style locked in for up to three days. Style just got hotter. A new icon is born. New Elnet Heat Protect Styling Sprays from L'Oreal Paris. Transfer the money immediately or face unimaginable consequences. Same old, same old. Try newkittybingo.com. When you register, there's £10 free play with no deposit required. <laughs> Put the meow into bingo at kittybingo.com. Come with me and you'll be In a world of pure imagination Take a look and you'll see Into your imagination We'll begin with a spin Traveling in the world of my creation What we'll see will defy Explanation If you want to view paradise Simply look around and view it Anything you want to do it Want to change the world There's nothing to it Hello ladies. Women all over the UK and Ireland want to know if anti-wrinkle creams really work. Over 25,000 of you put Garnier Ultralift to the test and an amazing 80% saw visible results against the wrinkle reader. Hello, Angela from Newport. I call them laughter lines, but they're wrinkles. <laughs> so yeah, I, I've noticed they're not so prominent. Natasha in London. I know it's cheesy, but it did work. It was really good. Geraldine from Ireland. Do this to this and I'd like to keep it at that stage for as long as I can. Trust what you can see. Come on, try Garnier Ultralift for yourself. Who takes care of us? Garnier. Time is never on our side. Your busy lives can lead to missing the start of the TV shows you love. TV's mine! I didn't miss it, tell me I didn't miss it. That's why we believe in giving you a second chance. Sky One, Sky Living and Sky Atlantic now offer Plus One channels so you can tune into your favourite shows one hour later. Ah! It's always a good time. Sky, believe in better. Bobby Williams is back. Tomorrow at 9 on Sky One HD and an hour later on Sky One Plus One. Yeah. Are you questioning your size? Is there a So 
what I think that clip shows is the the performer that you are, that the first thing that clicks into your head is you don't even say I'm not going to let someone ruin my night. What you say is I'm not going to let anyone stop you having a good time. I genuinely, genuinely have got a lot of professional pride. I want people to have an amazing time. Um, and it, it is the showbiz adage, the show must go on. Was it a better gig after that happening, though? Did something happen? Was there a charge? In oh, it? well, you're full of adrenaline. Yeah. So supercharged. Yeah. In fact, that much adrenaline that I spoke like an American. Is everybody OK? <laughs> <laughs> when Take That decided to get back together, how did you feel? When the boys first got together, I was pretty much, all oh, right, okay. Uh, As they've, I think sold, they they've, were. Sold, they've sold 275,000 tickets. They've done what? Really? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> How have they managed to do that? I was, I was gobsmacked. Yeah. Gobsmacked, annoyed? Gobsmacked in all manner of everything. Uh, pleased for the boys, you know. Um, not too pleased that I wanted them to take over the joint, you know. Yeah. They can have a certain level, just don't smash the living daylights out of it like they did. Right. The take that stuff was all happening whilst I was sort of going, I want nothing to do with this industry. I want to go and get on a couch and I want to have honey Dijon crisps and I want to watch reality TV and do nothing forever. So who made the first move for you to rejoin Take That? Mark had gotten in contact a couple of times saying, come down. And I was too scared. They asked me to go down to the hotel and um, they played me the circus, their album, and it blew me away. This is what I should be doing. I should be doing these big pop tunes. And it was from the moment I heard the circus that I wanted to be back in the band. Right. I said, this is all lovely. I said, um, but I, I need to have my say. I need to tell you why I was so angry with you, Gary. And we sat down and I said my piece, then he said his piece. And then, you know, the, the seconds later, I'm sort of just in his arms, giggling, laughing, like, school children and, you know, in the kitchen with my arms round him, just looking at him and so pleased to have got rid of all this angst and all this uh, stupidity and nothingness. It was from that moment, I'd, I got an album coming out, I didn't want to promote it, I didn't want to promote that album, I wanted to be and take that with these boys. They appeared to be having a lot of fun, because they were. So why not then just stay as a member of Take That? Why? What, now? Yeah. Uh, there are many reasons why I want to be in Take That. There's also many reasons that I want to be a solo artist too. I have my own ego. I have my own wish and desire for my own output to be appreciated. Did you enjoy that progress tour? Yeah, very much so. Yeah, a lot. The, the chemistry or whatever those, whatever it is, those four boys or those five boys, People just love it. I wish there'd been more routines. Do you reckon? Yeah. They were well in their forties now, a few of them lads. Yeah. You know, and a They've lot... They've still got some moves, though. They have, but a lot of those routines uh, are built for 20-year-olds. <laughs> They're not built for 40-year-olds. Tell me about the song Different. Yeah, Different's a song I wrote with Gary Barlow. There's a lyric, who's this about, where you say, you took my youth, you took my health, and if you're not here, I'll fight myself. You're supposed to make this better. It's um, as deep as it gets, that one, and uh, they will remain nameless. I put all my heart into, into that song, and um, it's so weird because, you know, like I say, you don't write about everyday stuff in songs. You write about the most extreme things and then you relive them every night that you sing them. Yeah. Strange that, you know, it's... Uh, it's it's Because, like, No Regrets is about take that. Mm. How do I relive that now? I've got different feelings, different emotions. Yeah. It's weird getting up night after night and singing about stuff that 
really, really hurts. When I look you in the eyes, something deep inside me dies. Cause I know you won't get better, better, better. You'd rather be right than below. The only thing I understood, nothing's ever good enough. I stumble. What do you think when you see other boy back? Like, so, like, One Direction now? It looks as though they're having a lot of fun. I might be wrong, but I think they actually are having yeah. a lot of fun. It's inevitable that one will end up in rehab, uh, maybe two. Um, somebody's going to have a career, somebody isn't. Um, this, this right now is it's uh, virginal. Um, it's pure pop. 
there's a storm on the horizon. But that's inevitable for any five people that get together, you know. I actually haven't thought that deeply about it other than looking at it from the surface like everybody else is going, I like this, what's happening. Where do you think you stand? Where's your place in the history of British music? Somewhere just above steps and slightly below Westlife. <laughs> Not far away from there. Come on. I, I think that to, to a lot of people, you know, they don't, to, they don't like my brand of whatever I do. To a majority of people, the ones that like me at least see me as their brother or their older uncle or their friend. I, I am the quintessential boy next door. I feel that way. And I do feel as though if I was a pop star, this is what I'd do. And I could understand that people that come see me think that if they were a pop star, this is what they would do. You know, um, I have a gigantic ego and need to be at the top of the pile and be doing amazingly well. Also, at the same time, I'm just pleased to be anywhere. Do you think you're a national treasure? Uh, do I think I'm a national treasure? Uh, I don't see why not. I don't see why I shouldn't be. I'm a good lad, really. And our weekend with Robbie continues tomorrow from nine as he takes to the stage. With